Ahmed, thanks so much for your time for TRT World. Uh, now, Qatar's foreign ministry made the announcement uh, just uh, yesterday that the release of six Taliban prisoners have been resolved. Does this mean no more hurdles and, uh, you know, these long-awaited talks can finally bring some results? Uh, th that's correct, yes. Uh, actually, uh, in the intra-Afghan peace talks were set uh, to take place in March uh, this year, but it uh, was repeatedly delayed uh, over the agreement uh, between the United States and the Taliban, which was uh, signed on, uh, on uh, February uh, of, of this year. And now, uh, this, of course, uh, the start of the, uh, the intra-Afghan uh, process is a significant development in the Afghan peace process, which, as you mentioned, the, the Qatari foreign minister has uh, uh, announced that uh, the peace talks will uh, start uh, on Saturday. Now, uh, th this is a very, uh, uh, very monumental moment that you have two opposing sides, uh, the Afghan national government and the Taliban movement who are uh, sitting around the table and talking peace. Now, the main question is that uh, will the Taliban and the Afghan government meet, uh, find a middle ground on issues uh, that the Taliban um, usually defy? Uh, what are, what are these, uh, what, what are these, amenable to exactly, peace, uh, and what are these major uh, issues? What are these major issues? What will top the agenda uh, of the talks uh, on Saturday? Uh, will it be a permanent ceasefire, uh, the options for the current political system? Uh, what will be the main thing that we can expect for them to resolve? Uh, there will be a permanent uh, ceasefire, uh, I believe, shortly after the, the start of the intra-Afghan government. But the main uh, issue will be a future government. And as I mentioned, uh, will the national government, in this case, the Republic, Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, find a middle ground uh, with the Taliban on issues that they continuously defy uh, uh, amenable to uh, freedom and democracy? Uh, now you have a democratic government in Kabul. Uh, will the Taliban accept that uh, structure or they will insist on their uh, installments of uh, Islamic Emirates, uh, which the Republic side, in this case, the Afghan national government says, is not acceptable to the uh, to the people of Afghanistan. So this is, uh, I believe, a significant uh, order, and uh, it's just part of the process. Uh, it will be a lengthy uh, and, and tedious process, no doubt, but there are other issues such as uh, the amendment of the Afghan constitution, uh, and uh, changing uh, the political system uh, as well as the democratic, uh, the democratic uh, system uh, that I mentioned that uh, are the Taliban allowed to, uh, to accept those uh, values or not. Well, we just mentioned uh, Mike Pompeo, the U.S. Secretary, will also be there at the beginning of the talks. Um, how important is for his administration to bring an end to this four decades long war, especially just before the U.S. elections? What's the U.S. role in all this? Now, I think the U.S. plays a very significant role in this process. Uh, remember that the agreement was signed between the U.S. and the Taliban. So the U.S. Uh, will, uh, of course, oversee the, the, the process very closely and it will have some uh, some of its uh, conditions for both sides to uh, eventually come to uh, an agreement in order to form a future government in Afghanistan. Uh, the U.S. will be heavily involved uh, since it has strategic and security uh, interest in Afghanistan and the wider region. Thanks so much for that, uh, Ahmed Murid Parto. Thanks so much for your insight. He's a former senior national representative of Afghanistan to U.S. Central Command.